first time home buyers, single moms, where are y'all at? First time home buyers, couples, where are y'all at? <laughs> well, I am a divorced single mom who is also a homeowner. And I'm going to share with you, first time home buyers, single moms, how you can purchase a home with little to no money down. And I'm going to make the first time home buying process simple and easy for you because you can and will be successful in purchasing your first home. Welcome to my channel, Fit with Tip 100. The, the steps I took to lose 130 pounds. Three secrets that I use to pay off $100,000 in student loan debt. This topic is definitely near and dear to my heart. What's up, my Fit fam? Thanks once again for tuning in to another segment of Fit with Tiff 100, your one-stop shop for everything fit, from being fit in your finances, fit inside your body, and fit in your thoughts. Today, I'd like to talk to you about being fit in your finances, but more specifically, on the first-time home buying process. So stay tuned. Now, if you are not a single parent and you are a couple and you're interested in purchasing your home. These three tips or three steps will also help you in purchasing your first home. So make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video so that you have all the tips you need in being successful in purchasing your first home. Before we get into this video, make sure that you like this video, share and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a Fit Family member, and comment down below if you are interested in purchasing your first home. Now let's get into this video. Well guys, I am a divorced single mom. However, I did enter into the first time home buying process as a married woman. And there were a lot of things that I learned during that process as well as when I went through my divorce, some things that I'm glad that I did when purchasing my first home. Now, this was a requested video from one of my subscribers. I was super excited to get this request, especially because I try to talk about topics that I'm familiar with, that I've experienced, so that when I'm sharing information with you, it is not only genuine, but I know that it's a proven fact that it works. And so I do hope that you learn a lot from these tips. And without further ado, let's get started. Step number two, learn how to get approved. Now getting approved for a home loan is based on three factors, your credit, your income, and your debt. Let's talk about factor number one, your credit. Your credit score should be at least a 620 when purchasing a home. This is considered an average score, but the higher your credit score, the lower your interest rate will be in paying down that home loan. You want to ensure that you do not have any accounts in collections, which brings me to my next point. Making sure that you have three lines of credit that are active and in good standing. Make sure that you've had these accounts for at least two years and that you have had no late payments or missed payments in the past 12 months. And then you also want to ensure that your credit utilization is at or below 30%. For more details on how to improve your credit score, click this link. And I will also provide the link in the description box below. Factor number two in getting approved for your home loan is your income. 
You want to make sure that you have at least two years of consecutive work experience with the same employer. And also it could be within the same industry, but I think it looks stronger when it's with the same employer. This shows the mortgage company or lender that you have a consistent line of work, therefore consistent income. You want to save the most recent two years of your W-2s and tax returns. Additionally, you want to save the most recent 30 pay stubs. And something else that you want to save is your two most recent bank statements. And saving these bank statements, it shows the mortgage company or the lender five key things. You have enough money to close on your home, closing costs as I mentioned earlier. You have enough money to afford the down payment on your home, as I mentioned earlier for first time home buyers, three to four percent. If you're not a first time home buyer, that's 10 to 20 percent. It shows that you do not have any large undocumented deposits unless you can prove that these deposits were gifts from your spouse or the person you're purchasing the home with if you're not single. It also shows that you do not have any overdraft fees or insufficient funds. And it also shows that you have not made any large purchases and especially you don't want to make any large purchases on credit before you close on your home. And lastly, when we're talking about income, you want to make sure that your income is increasing or at least staying the same. You do not want to show the lender that your income has decreased because you want the lending company or the lender to feel comfortable and that you can truly afford to pay the loan on the home. Now, factor number three is your debt. Do not, I repeat, do not make large purchases on debt right before or during your home buying process. And when does that home buying process end? When you close on your home and they give you the keys to your home. That is when that home buying process ends. Guys, I know it is so tempting to want to purchase things ahead of time to prepare for moving into your new home, such as your furniture, your appliances. I get it. I've been there. But try not to do that during your home buying process. It can send up a red flag. It can cause your interest on your home to go up when you're applying for the loan. Because remember, when your credit utilization is high or your debt to income ratio is high, this negatively impacts your credit score. So definitely don't get into any more debt when you're purchasing your home. And finally, step number three, enter into the home buying process with wisdom and some strong negotiation skills. You want to choose a location based on what you can afford. In many neighborhoods, the school taxes can be high, HOA fees can be very high, and you definitely want to move into an area where those fees are not quite as high. So think about that when looking for the home you want to purchase. Also, consider if you want to live close to your job. A lot of people find this beneficial because they can get to work without any commute time um, as well as traffic and it's just quicker and safer. Some people prefer not to work in the city and maybe live in the suburbs because it's cheaper cost of living and then also that you're not always with your coworkers <laughs> seven days out of the week because you will run into them at stores and different things if you are living close to work. And then in addition to that, you wanna make sure that you're looking at the school zones if you have children. So some of y'all single mommies or even couples that have children, think about the schools that you're zoned to with that new home that you want to purchase. Is it in a good school district or will you have to pay extra money and put them in private school because you're moving to an area where the school district is not at par with your expectations? And finally, next tip is for you single moms or single parents out there. You want to ensure that you are choosing a location that is near your village near your village. This is so important because what if you're at work and you're not able to leave at a certain time but your child gets sick 
and they're at school or they're at daycare and they need someone to pick them up. You may have someone in your village that's nearby, but if you live far away from your village, it becomes challenging in finding that extra help that you need. So consider your village when you're choosing a home. Make sure that you get a fixed rate with a fixed time frame so that your monthly payments are not fluctuating. So for example, getting a fixed rate locked in at maybe about 3.5% for a 30-year fixed mortgage or a 15-year fixed mortgage. That will make sure that the interest rate is not changing over time and affecting your monthly payments. Now I can say that with taxes and insurance, that can truly affect the amount of money that you need in escrow, which can in fact affect your monthly payments. They can be up some years and some years they can go back down. And if you want me to make a video more about that process, because I did in fact, after owning my home over time, decide to take over my insurance and tax payments so that my monthly mortgage would never change. And so if you want to know more about that, drop a comment down below and then I can talk about why I decided to take over my taxes and my insurance. You also want to make sure if the builder is offering any specials. So this goes for people who decide when purchasing their first home that they want to have their home built from the ground up. That is what I did. So when having the home built from the ground up, the builder may offer specials. So our builder did in fact offer specials because at the time we moved into a new community and some of the specials that they offered were stainless steel appliances, upgrades on carpet and granite countertops. And I'm sure there were some other specials, but that definitely saved money when paying on the home. You want to ensure that the inspector inspects the home and if you are getting the house built from the ground up that the builder fixes every issue with the home or if you're purchasing a used home you want to make sure that the seller either fixes all of the issues and you have it inspected by your own inspector. You hire someone. Don't just take the person that they suggest because that person, they probably already have a relationship with them. Make sure that you hire an inspector to inspect the home and either make sure that the seller fixes the issue with the home or they take some money off of the purchase price of the home or the closing cost. And here's one thing that I later learned. You can also negotiate the closing costs by researching different title companies in your areas and seeing what their prices are as it relates to closing costs. And if you choose to go with the title company that is being suggested to you, make sure that they do at least match the price of the title companies in your area. Also, shop around for insurance companies and seeing what the best rates are for hazard insurance, which is your homeowner's insurance. Ask about warranties. When you're purchasing a home that you're getting built from the ground up, you want to make sure that that house is under warranty. Please know that over time, homes can shift, foundations can change, there can be cracks in the walls and the floors. You'd be surprised. <laughs> and even if the house was built well, you may still see shifts in the foundation due to external circumstances earthquakes, even a train. <laughs> so you want to make sure that your house is under warranty and ensure that it's a good amount of time. So I think my warranty lasted for maybe maybe one or two years for the um, inside of the house and when it related to the foundation, I think it was like five or ten years. I, can't, I think it was five years for the foundation. Um, but just make sure that you ask about warranties so that you can cover yourself in case you notice any issues with the home after you close. And finally, see if your home is a homestead, which qualifies you for homestead exemption, which gives you tax breaks on your property. This also protects you against forced sell in the event that you have a debt that you were not able to pay or in the event that you file for bankruptcy. I know that I went through some circumstances during my divorce and because my home qualified for homestead exemption, I did not have to sell my home. It also provides ongoing relief for the surviving spouse of a spouse who passed away. 
My Fit Fam, do not be a stranger. I can be reached at Fit with Tiff 100 on Instagram and on Facebook, or you can go to my website at moneymakeoverministries.com. Definitely like, comment, share, and subscribe to my content, and always stay fit in your finances, and I will see you in my next upload. Bye.